So here's some help with the experiment 5 post lab. The first question says to list two steps or precautions you had to take during the experiment that might have made a difference in the mole ratio of your product and explain what the differences might have been. So first, to list the two steps, you want to give a letter and a number from the procedure to clearly identify which steps they, that you're talking about. And for each step, you want to state whether the mole ratio would be bigger or smaller and explain why. And so here we're talking about the ratio between magnesium and oxygen. And uh, question three might give you some helpful ideas on where to look in the procedure to find those, those uh, steps that would affect the mole ratio and how. Question two says, do you expect your empirical formula to be the same as other students in the lab? Explain your answer in terms of the procedure and be specific. So first, remember from the pre-lab for experiment five that the empirical formula is really just a ratio between the elements. And so if let's say that you've got a ratio of one to one, one magnesium for every one oxygen, so that would be, if that's the ratio you got, that would be the empirical formula for that compound, magnesium oxide. Now, no matter how much a sample you, took, you would take, a compound is always going to be the same. So no matter whether you took a little magnesium oxide or a lot of magnesium oxide, in both of those samples, for every one magnesium atom, there should be one oxygen atom. And so if you just thought in a sort of theoretical way, you might think that, oh, all students are doing the same reaction, and so it doesn't matter how much magnesium they take, however much magnesium take, if they take more magnesium, it'll just react with more oxygen. If they take less magnesium, it'll just react with less oxygen, so that the ratio, which is the empirical formula, would stay the same. But that assumes that nothing could go wrong. And so for the second part, where they say to explain your answer in terms of the procedure, what they're really asking is, where could that theoretical scenario go wrong? How could different, what could s different students do that would mess up that ratio? And so here, you want to list a letter and a number from the procedure that could give different students different ratios and then explain how they could give students those different ratios. Now your answer to question one should help you a lot with this. For question three, question three says, would the percent of oxygen be more or less if any of the following happened? And give a reasonable explanation for your answer. And then they give us three scenarios. So let's just recap what we did in the experiment. We took a magnesium sample, we heated it up in the presence of oxygen, and we got that white powdery product, magnesium oxide. And I'll just balance that equation. And so the difference between those is the amount of oxygen that we added. The oxygen's coming from the air. So the bigger the difference, the more oxygen we added. The smaller the difference, the less oxygen we added. Okay, so in this first scenario, it says the magnesium was heated twice but not to a constant weight. Now, if you remember, you, heat, you took a strip of magnesium, you heated it in the, fl in the flame, and when you did that, it got so hot that it made the re oxygen in the air start reacting with it, start sticking to it. And when the oxygen in the air started sticking to the magnesium, it made the mass of your sample bigger, because now you don't just have the magnesium, you have the magnesium and the oxygen that's sticking to it. So, the weight increased. Then you let it cool down, you weighed it, you heated it up again. And there might have been a f small parts of the magnesium sample that hadn't stuck to oxygen yet, and the second time you heat it, they had an opportunity to. So oxygen then sticks to those parts. And so after heating it a second time, the weight goes up yet again, because you're adding even more oxygen to the sample. But at a certain point, you won't have any magnesium left all of the magnesium will have oxygen stuck to it, there won't be room for more oxygen to stick anywhere. And so no matter how many times you heat it, you'll always end up with the same weight. 
That's what they mean by heating the sample to a constant weight. You heat it up until all the magnesium has oxygen stuck to it, so no matter how much you heat it up again, no more could stick to it. The weight will always remain constant. So when they say that you didn't heat it up to a constant weight, what they're really saying is that some of the magnesium didn't react. There's still magnesium available for oxygen to stick to, and if you heated it up again, the weight would go up. So if we have our scenario where we take the magnesium and we heat it up with oxygen and get magnesium oxide, if you didn't heat it to a constant weight, then there is still magnesium there that's unreacted. And so that means that the percent of oxygen is going to be the difference between those two, between that the blue magnesium and the purple magnesium oxide, which is lower here because there was still magnesium that could have turned into it. So what does that do to the percent oxygen? Is it bigger or is it smaller than it would have been? B says the crucible lid was left on the crucible during the entire heating. Now again, we have magnesium reacting with oxygen to give us magnesium oxide. Oxygen is coming from the air, but if you have a lid on the crucible, it's not letting as much oxygen in. And so, no matter how much you heat the magnesium up, if there's no oxygen available, not all of it will turn into a magnesium oxide. And so the amount of that that you get at the end is going to be smaller. And so what does that tell you about the percent of oxygen? Is that bigger or smaller than it would have been in the original scenario where you didn't leave the crucible lid on for the whole experiment? For C, C says the crucible lid was left off during the heating and the magnesium was so hot it started to react with the nitrogen in the air as well as the oxygen. Recall that air is around 79% nitrogen and around 19% oxygen, so it's really mostly nitrogen, but the nitrogen is really, really stable, so the magnesium will sooner react with oxygen than the nitrogen, but if you get the magnesium hot enough, it will react with the nitrogen. So let's say you have this scenario, and if, you, if, it, if the magnesium is reacting with the nitrogen, then it won't be able to react with the oxygen. There's, if you think of it as there's only so much space around the magnesiums. And if you fill that space up with nitrogens, there's not going to be as much space for oxygen. So the amount of magnesium oxide that you'd have would be less. So does that mean that the percent of oxygen is bigger or smaller than it otherwise would have been?